everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Kirk Custom 5th Wheel Installation Kit here on our 2020 Ram 2500. So here we have our rails installed. This is what it's going to look like. We actually have two different finish options here for the rails. We're going to have the carbide finish that we see here. We're also going to have a gloss finish. Now it's really going to depend on preference. This truck actually has a spray in bed liner, so the carbide finish actually matches this a little bit better because it's a little bit duller. So what are our fifth rails going to do? Obviously they're going to allow us to tow a fifth wheel trailer. We also offer adapters that allow you to tow a gooseneck trailer as well. So no matter what type of trailer you have, you're going to be able to tow it here with this fifth wheel installation kit. I'd also like to point out that you can actually use a wide variety of fifth wheel hitches. We don't necessarily have to have a curt hitch. And the reason for this is the spacing between our rails front to back and our pegs here left to right is actually going to be an industry standard measurement. Therefore, we can use fifth wheel hitches such as those from Reese, Draw Tight, Husky, and so on. So a couple questions we get asked here about the installation kit is number one, they do not come with the pins and clips which secure the fifth wheel hitch to the rails. Those are more than likely going to come with your fifth wheel hitch. And another question we get is in regards to weight capacity. So these particular rails and installation kit here, they don't have a rated weight capacity. They're basically going to be able to handle whatever the truck is capable of. So in regards to installation, you do want to set a little bit of time aside to be able to complete this. It's not hard per se, but it is going to take some time. We don't really need to make too many modifications. It's actually going to use some existing weld nuts in the frame. We do, however, have to drill a couple holes into our truck bed. But aside from that, it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and show you guys how to do that now. So the first step of our installation here, we're actually going to be lowering and removing our spare tire temporarily. In order to do this, you're going to need to get a tool out of the cab of your vehicle here. It's going to go into a slot underneath the tailgate here. There'll be some more detailed instructions in your owner's manual if you're not sure how to do this. We're just going to be using a specialized tool we have here to make it a little bit easier but we're basically just going to be lowering the spare tire so we can temporarily remove it from the vehicle. So now that we have our spare tire out, we're going to come underneath the vehicle here. We're going to have a heat shield here. We're going to need to remove that as well. We're going to have various fasteners, a couple over here, as well as a couple on the back side as well. So we'll use a 10 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove all of those. And now with our heat shield removed, we can go ahead and set it aside. So now we're gonna come underneath our truck here. We're gonna be coming forward of our rear axle here. So directly in front of our coil springs here, about the same location as where our shock mounts inside the frame. We're going to have a wiring harness on either side which attaches to the frame with one of these little connection clips here. We're going to take a trim panel tool, we're going to get up underneath that, and then we're just going to work it free. And the reason we need to do that is because we can see two connection points here. There's going to be two weld nuts inside the frame here. We're going to be using these to attach one of our fifth wheel plates. We're going to be doing this on both sides. So because our weld nuts are on the underside of the vehicle here, they're going to be subject to dirt and debris. We want to make sure that we go ahead, take some spray lubricant here, along with a nylon brush. We just want to clean those out so our hardware threads in nice and easy. So now before we begin installing the bracket on the vehicle, we're just going to be showing you all the hardware and brackets we're going to be using for this step. We're going to grab our bracket here that's got a longer standoff on this end. It's got our two attachment holes here. So this is going to be the forward most bracket. We're going to be installing this one first. And then we're going to get some of our hardware ready. We're going to be getting one of our two thick spacer blocks in our kit here. We're going to be getting two bolts, different sizes. Both going to be M12, but this one's going to be a little bit longer as we can see here. We're also going to have two conical tooth washers. Now, the one that we're installing the spacer block through is definitely going to be the one that we're going to be using our longer bolt with, so we have a little bit more material there. So now we can take our bracket here. Now, they are going to be side-specific. We're going to want the longer standoff to be facing towards the cab of the truck. 
And we're first gonna start by installing this hole here. This one's actually gonna be flush with the back of our plate here. So we can grab our smaller bolt. You may need to maneuver it around this wiring harness as well. Then we can place it up into position. We're gonna get our holes lined up here. And then we can take the smaller bolt of the two that we have here with our conical tooth washer. We can just do our best to try to thread that on. So now that we have one bolt securing the plate, we're gonna come back to this other side here. We're gonna be taking our spacer block. We're gonna be slipping that between the frame and the bracket. And then we can take our longer bolt here with conical tooth washer and line everything up. So now we'll take our 19 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and snug down our two fasteners. So before we tighten down our fasteners here, we wanna make sure that we take our plates here. We're gonna pull it towards the cab of the truck. We essentially want the backside of our bracket here to sit flush with the channel of our bed support. So I'm gonna hold that there into position and tighten them down. And now we'll just repeat that same process for our forward bracket on the other side. So now with our brackets into position, we're gonna be taking an eighth inch drill bit. We're gonna be drilling a pilot hole as best as we can in the center of our holes here. So again, we wanna to try to line this up with the center of the hole as best as possible. And then drill through. Repeat the same process on the other side of our bracket and then on the other side as well. So now that we have our four holes drilled, we're gonna take our mounting rail here. This is gonna be the forwardmost location. We're gonna go ahead and align that with our four pilot holes that we just drilled. Now, now would be a good time to make sure that those pilot holes are in the correct location here. You basically just wanna make sure they're in the center of our second set of holes here, so our square holes. We're not gonna be using the outside ones. We're gonna be using this inside set here. We're gonna do that on both sides. So basically, just make sure that our holes are in the center of that square hole. You may need to re-drill the pilot hole if that's not the case. But now we're gonna have one more drill, or one more hole we're gonna to have to drill, and that's gonna be the center hole here closest to the cap. So again, just make sure we get the center of the hole as best as possible. Then we can go ahead and drill that all the way through. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna remove this rail here, we're gonna take a 9 16 inch drill bit, we're gonna enlarge all of our holes to their final size. Now once we have our holes drilled, you want to make sure that we come back with any sort of paint. You have a paint marker, a rattle can of paint will work as well. Just make sure we cover that bare metal so we don't have any issues with rust. So now with our holes enlarged, we can go ahead and reinstall our mounting rail here. The hardware we're going to get ready are our carriage bolts. They're going to be the shorter ones here, along with our U-shaped spacers. That's going to go between the corrugations in our bed and beneath the rails here so we don't collapse these corrugations and we tighten down our hardware. So now we can take our U-shaped spacers, we'll place that underneath our rail here, lining them up with our holes, we can set our rail back down, and then we're gonna go ahead and insert our carriage bolts. So now that we have all of our carriage bolts into position, we can go underneath the truck and secure the rail to the brackets and our bed. Before we do this, we want to go ahead and take a 19 millimeter socket. We want to loosen up our brackets here and how they attach to the frame, give us a little bit more room to work. And in our particular application, on the back side of this bracket here, there was quite a bit of a distance between the top of that and the bottom of our bed. 
So in order to help us out, sort of close that difference, uh, bring the two pieces of metal together, we stuck on one of our flange nuts here. We just sort of zipped it down. That's gonna bring this other side tight so we can install our spacer block. We're gonna be using the one with the center hole and then a flange nut. Once we have that on, I'm gonna take a 19 millimeter socket. We're just gonna go ahead and snug that down. Now once we have this side snug, we're gonna go ahead and loosen up that other side so we can install our spacer block. So now we'll come back with our offset spacer block, we'll insert that, and we'll secure it with our flange nut. And now we'll go ahead and snug up our two bolts which hold the bracket to the frame. Now we can just repeat the same process on the other side of the vehicle. So the next thing we're going to do, we're either going to be taking the base of our fifth wheel hitch or chances are you're not going to be using one of these, but we actually have a gooseneck plate here which installs inside the fifth wheel rails. That's going to have the same spacing as your fifth wheel hitch, so we can use this as well. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to drop one side of the pegs into the rail we just installed, and then the other side of the pegs is going to go into our second rail here, which we haven't secured yet. Once we get everything lined up, we're going to push our rail, sort of butt it up as close as we can as this other rail. We're going to be pushing in. And then we want to make sure we center it left, right in the truck bed. So we'll just simply measure from the inside of our wheel well here to the edge of the rail and make sure that's even on both sides. So now we can go ahead and start drilling our holes here for this rear rail. Now keep in mind, we're not going to be using the same set of holes we did for our other rail. We're actually going to be using the closest ones to the inside here. So if we count over one, two, three, four, we're going to be using our inside most holes here. And we're going to have one more attachment hole, which is going to be on the side closest to our tailgate. So we'll take our eighth inch drill bit. We'll try to get that as centered as we can in our hole. And we'll go ahead and drill those all out. So now that we have our eighth inch holes drilled, we're going to go ahead and remove the rail. We can come back with our 9 16 inch drill bit and enlarge them to their final size. So as we're drilling our holes, we're going to notice that we can actually see through the ground on the one closest to the tailgate, but the one closest to the cab for our rear rail here we actually can't see all the way through it. And the reason why is there's actually gonna be a bed support underneath. We actually gonna to have to find a smaller drill bit that's a little bit longer than the 9 16 inch one we're using. Chances are your 9 16 isn't gonna be long enough because we need to go all the way through this hole and drill through the bottom of that channel. So I just grabbed a half inch drill bit here which is a little bit longer than the one I was using before. And I'm just gonna puncture the bottom of that bed channel. Then we'll come underneath and enlarge it to the final size. So now we'll come back with our step drill bit here. Here's the hole that we just drilled through the top. We're going to come back and enlarge this to the final size, which is 7 eighths of an inch. We'll come back with the paint marker here and seal it up. We're also going to repeat the same process on the other side. So don't forget to take our paint marker here and just make sure we coat the inside of these holes for this rear rail as well. So we said we need to repeat that process over here on the passenger side, but keep in mind, we're only gonna be drilling from the top down. We're not actually gonna be able to drill and enlarge that hole in the bottom of the channel over here on the passenger side. Because what we're gonna be doing is, if we take a look inside our wheel well here, we're gonna see our channel. What we need to do is, we actually need to go ahead and take our spacer tube here we're gonna to have to sneak it up in that channel here. And once we get it stood up in the channel, we're gonna be taking a magnet tool that we have like such. We're gonna be attaching it to our spacer tube and then we're actually gonna be pushing that forward until we can get the spacer tube to line up with the hole that we drilled earlier. Now keep in mind, you may need to trim about a quarter inch of our spacer tube off in order to set it inside the channel here of our bed rail. So once we have our spacer tube into position, we have it lined up, 
We're gonna come back with our hex bolt here. Now we're only gonna have one of these in our kit. It's gonna be about three to four inches long, so you should be able to distinguish this from the rest of the bolts. But we'll simply use a flat washer and then we'll place the bolt through the hole, aligning it with the spacer tube and then securing it on the bottom side of our bed channel with a flange nut. So now we can begin inserting the rest of the hardware for our rail here. We're gonna be using these smaller carriage bolts on all of our holes except this far one back here. This one is going to take our longer carriage bolt. So we're only going to have one of these in our kit. It's going to look just like all of our other carriage bolt, except it's going to be a few inches longer. Just like that. So don't forget on all the spots where the rail isn't flush to the bed and we have a carriage bolt, we need to come back. I need to lift the rail up a little bit, but we need to come back here you shape the spacers here, set them down into position. So now we're going to be installing the frame brackets here for the rear rail. In order to do that, we're going to be coming on the driver's side here. We need to go ahead and remove this wiring harness from the frame here. So using those same clips that we removed earlier, just take our pry tool and pry them out. Once we get that away, now we're going to go ahead and clean out our two weld nuts at the top here, which are attachment points for the frame brackets. So now that we have our wiring harness free, we're going to take our driver's side rear bracket here, along with our hardware. We're going to be using these smaller fasteners here with a conical tooth washer. Then we're also going to need our spacer tube here. Now the spacer tube will have to go on first. We'll place that over our longer carriage bolt there just like that. And then we can go ahead and install the frame bracket. So now that we have that pushed up into place, we can go ahead and secure the bracket to the frame. And we'll leave those loose for now. So now we can take our square hole spacers here, get one of our flange nuts ready as well. And just slip that over our carriage bolt here and we can take one of our flange nuts and thread that on. Now I will say, if you have a little bit of trouble threading on the nut because you're pushing the carriage bolts back up through the rail, you could just use some tape, tape down the carriage bolts or a heavy object. So now we can just repeat the same process on the other side. However, we're only gonna be using this one attachment pole up here. We should already have our flange nut on our other bolt, which is gonna be inside this channel here and above this bracket. So now before we tighten everything down, we're going to go ahead and set our fifth wheel hitch or the gooseneck plate into our rails here. We also want to make sure we install our pins here. That way when we're tightening everything down, we don't have to worry about anything binding on us. So now we're ready to torque everything down. Keep in mind, we're going to be torquing the rails to the frame brackets first and then the frame brackets to the frame. So with everything torqued down, don't forget to reinstall the heat shield along with your spare tire. But that'll do it today for our look and installation of the Kurt Custom 5th Wheel Rail Kit here on our 2020 Ram 2500.